This is Pastor Jeff Riddle from Christ Reformed Baptist Church in Louisa, Virginia. This is an audio version of a book review that I wrote. The book under review is titled Clash of Visions, Populism and Elitism in New Testament Theology by Robert W. Yarborough. It was published by Mentor in 2019, and it is 116 pages in length. This uh, written review appeared in the Midwestern Journal of Theology, Volume 19, Number 1, in Spring 2020, and it can be found on pages 165 to 167. Uh, This uh, is now the review. Robert W. Yarborough is a seasoned evangelical academic scholar who is well known for, among other significant contributions, his translations of several important works by evangelical German authors like Etta Linnemann, Gerhard Meyer, and others for English-speaking audiences. This brief book is an expansion of the author's 2018 Gein's Lectures at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. In this work, Yarborough reflects on the clash of visions between the popular or traditional Christian's approach to Scripture and that of the elite academic scholar. The book consists of three short chapters. Chapter one is titled, The Enduring Critical Objection to Confessional Reading of Scripture. Here, Yarborough notes the clash, primarily in the West, between the hyper-skeptical and rationalistic post-enlightenment elite scholars and scholarly trained ministers and the simple faith of ordinary believers, including evangelical scholars and ministers who hold to traditional Christian beliefs. He cites as an example of this clash a recent conflict in Sweden between James A. Kelhofer, an elite scholar, and Anders Gerdmar, a charismatic evangelical scholar, in which Kelhofer harshly critiqued Gerdmar simply for holding to basic orthodox positions. Yarborough notes that the elitist guild consensus often functions, quote, like the papal magisterium. Against these truths, no warranted objections are possible, end quote. Chapter two is titled, The Enduring Appeal of Neo-Allegorical Interpretation, Bauer and Bultmann Redux. Yarborough first clarifies the distinction between the elitist and populist approaches to Scripture. Elitist scholarship attempts to reinterpret the Bible's message, quote, on the basis of an endless progression of self-referential methods based on skepticism toward it, end quote. The author laments the fact that American evangelicalism in particular has been tainted by this academic elitism. He contrasts this with the rise of populist Christianity in the non-Western world, offering assurance that, quote, American evangelical decadence does not automatically taint the 89% of Protestants in the world who reside elsewhere, end quote. He suggests as evidence of current Western decadence the contemporary revival of interest in F.C. Bauer and Rudolf Bultmann, radical critics of the 19th and 20th centuries. The title of of chapter 3 asks, Is Reproachment Possible or Even Relevant? Yarborough begins by asserting, quote, that that, that for over two centuries a subgroup associated with the Western Protestant Church has assumed and asserts control of the meaning of the Bible. And and exerted profound influence on pastoral training and cultural perception of the truth of the Bible, not only in the West, but worldwide, end quote. He sees hope, however, in the emergence and growth of global Christianity. Quote, it is my hope and contention that we are on the verge of a time when the populist harvest that has seen hundreds of millions added to the to church membership will result in fruit in the form of of the reclamation of biblical hermeneutics for Christ and his kingdom in parts of the world where elitist interpretation has gained undue sway, end quote. Yarborough suggests that the resurgence of Christianity in the non-Western world is producing more martyrs than elitist scholars and, quote, 
the martyr church is not asking scholars if they can affirm that Paul wrote Ephesians, that the gospel words of Jesus are authentic, or that the one who is faithful unto death will receive the crown of life, Revelation 2.10, end quote. In the end, Yarborough sees populism, as he defines it, providing, quote, a promising framework for theologically rich exegesis and exposition of the Bible, end quote. The work concludes with two brief appendices. First, there is a short article by German Lutheran churchman and scholar Ulrich Wilkins, translated by Yarborough, who in his later years saw the dangers of elitist scholarship and affirmed confessional Christianity. Second, there is a brief article by Korean-American New Testament scholar Sidney Park, tracing her experiences with racism as an immigrant and her embracing of Christianity. In this work, Yarborough offers a succinct and compelling description and analysis of the divide that has existed since the Enlightenment between elitist and popular approaches to the Bible and Christian theology. He points to inherent problems that have arisen as Western Protestant evangelicals in particular have embraced the historical critical method in biblical studies while still attempting to affirm traditional Christian theology. In the end, he expresses hope for fruitful rapprochement between the two perspectives, especially with the rise of non-Western Christianity. Yarborough's insights are salient and helpful, especially his critique of contemporary American evangelicalism and its embrace of academic scholarship. But some questions might also be raised. Yarborough offers a broad definition of populist Christianity. See his list of foundational Christian views on page 16. Some will see this definition as too broad and ecumenical. He suggests, for example, that evangelicals can find so-called allies in Roman Catholics in their common affirmation of biblical inerrancy. But this overlooks fundamental and intractable differences between the two. The same applies to his enthusiastic hopes for the rise of non-Western Christianity. Perhaps some of these hopes, however, should be tempered with anxiety, as some of these movements have proven to be cultic, syncretistic, and unorthodox. An example would be the explosion of so-called African independent churches, which blend nominal Christianity with traditional African religions. Yarborough uses the term confessional simply in reference to those who confess the faith, not to those who embrace a historic Protestant confession of faith. One wonders how a resurgence of robust and well-defined creedal faith might positively affect Christianity wherever it might exist. One might also ask if the elitist approach is inherently corrosive to the faith and why rapprochement should be sought with it. Yarborough's work is thought-provoking. It offers valuable reflections on the inevitable disconnect or clash which results from the attempt to embrace enlightenment methods of academic study, while also affirming the inspiration and authority of the Bible. This comes from a scholar uniquely situated to offer such a critique, given his training and expertise in the historical critical method, his awareness of the worldwide Christian movement, and his personal evangelical convictions. Like those whose works he has previously translated, for example, Linneman and Meyer, Yarborough offers his own compelling and insightful evaluation of the clash between elitist scholarship and populist faith. Here ends the review. Jeffrey T. Riddle, pastor, Christ Reformed Baptist Church, Louisa, Virginia. To receive other book reviews like this one, Word Magazine podcasts and sermons, you can subscribe to, to Christ Reformed Baptist Church's sermon audio feed on iTunes by searching for Christ Reformed Baptist Church or subscribe to the Word Magazine channel on youtube.com. You can also find other written book reviews and book notes at my blog, jeffriddle.net.